Hey family, hope that everybody is doing well out there. Before we get started on today's topic, let's address the elephant in the room right now. Let's just get it out the way. Jeremy, what happened to the dreadlocks, man? Dreadlocks are gone, okay? If you looked at some of my older videos, you'll notice that I had dreadlocks for about four to five years. Uh, and my daughter had never seen me without dreads, so I was curious to understand what her reaction would be. Um, and honestly, I got tired of people coming up to me at the gym and telling me, yo, has anybody ever told you you look like Snoop Dogg? Has, has, has anybody told you that you look like Nipsey Hussle? As if all black men in LA look the same. <laughs> and sometimes I joke around and, and be like, yeah, yeah, th those are my cousins. Those, those are my cousins. All right? Hopefully, what they start saying is, you, you, you look like you belong in a GQ magazine. You, you look a little bit like Idris Elba. I, I would take it as a compliment to look like one of the sexiest men alive, all right? <laughs> well, anyways, what I wanna talk about in today's video are some of my thoughts around the current market in early 2024 if you wanna get into the UX or product design space. If you're looking for a job, and this is something that I feel like a lot of my mentees over the past few months were struggling to understand. So I would say that for the last one and a half years that the product design space has changed a lot. I've been working in this space for almost a decade and I feel like it's, it's really changed a lot in the, in the last one and a half years. There's a lot of people online uh, talking about their experiences in this space, but I noticed that many of these individuals don't have a ton of experience. They just got started in design after the pandemic. So I just want to share with you what I've been seeing. About two years ago, if you wanted to get a product or a UX design job, it was, you know, sort of important for you to understand strategy. And what I mean by strategy is understanding how to take an ambiguous concept and turn it into a tangible product with an entire team, right? If you're working with engineers, developers, and executives, it was super important for you to understand how to communicate your process, right? And now what I'm seeing, especially after interviewing with companies over the last month and a half almost, um, when things weren't working out in my favor with my business, what I, what I started seeing is that companies were less reactive to understanding strategy and they were more inclined to understanding your visual design skills, right? That was what I started noticing on the six to eight interviews that I was going through with different companies. And this was, I would say it was uh, one of the more consistent themes that I started to see in my interviews, right? I'm like, yo, this is what I did. This is how I helped the company save money. This is like all those sorts of things, right? But they were like, but what about your visual design skills? That, that's something that you lack. And I think that working in enterprise spaces like Salesforce and LinkedIn, it, you know, my portfolio, I feel like isn't up to par with the visual skills that are needed in today's market. Right, so what does that mean for me? You know, I have almost 10 years of experience. What does that mean? It means that I probably need to work on personal projects to show my visual design skills. I need to practice improving my visual design skills. Just because I've been doing this for a while doesn't mean that I'm just set. Right? I consistently have to improve, and that's one of the areas that I see many designers across the industry have to improve in this moment if you want to stay ahead of the game. Right? And another thing that I've noticed is that many of my mentees in the last six months have struggled to land a job. They're struggling to land their first gig as designers. And um, I feel like that is because companies are less risk averse in this very moment in time. With money tightened up, 
and people losing jobs and layoffs happening, I feel like companies are less willing to take a risk on an individual who needs training or needs some kind of handholding, right? Which makes sense. If you were going through some type of chronic condition, would you go to the doctor that has less experience and who's just starting out their career? Or would you wanna to go to the doctor with a lot of experience who has seen a lot of different things when it comes to people with your chronic condition? Who would you wanna hire, right? I think that that makes a lot of sense. But what, so what does that mean for you if you just graduated if you just graduated from college or you're coming out of a boot camp in this time i think what it means is that your goal should be to focus less on big techs big, big tech companies and startups and focus more of your efforts on improving your skills probably starting some type of freelance role and allowing yourself to survive <laughs> Okay, uh, because one of the most challenging aspects of entering in the, into this space is having the financial runway for yourself to stay sane mentally and emotionally to keep going. Right. I think it's also important that you understand how to build relationships in this moment, because at some point things will get better in the economy. And if your seeds are planted, in the right types of relationships and you're fertilizing those relationships when the time comes that's your moment right somebody might think of you when they see that you're driven that you're persistent that you're resilient and you don't give up on the path that you want to create for yourself right i don't think that a lot of managers don't want to hire people. I think that is just very challenging for their teams and, you know, communicating budgets to executives. I think that there's a ton of challenges. You know, a lot of the folks that I was interviewing with, um, they had mentioned to me that there were layoffs within the companies that they work at. They're going on interviews to hire people so what that means is that there's more demand and stress on the designers who are working at these companies and on top of that they're interviewing hundreds of people right so i think that i have empathy for the companies and the individuals in, within those companies who have to make hiring decisions but i also have empathy for anybody who's going after a job right now right so yeah guys that was just some of the information that i wanted to share with you uh and just to recap experienced designers are struggling to get jobs but instead of focusing on strategy more experienced designers are starting to lean into improving their visual design skills including myself and if you're somebody with less experience or no experience at all it is extremely challenging to get a job. It's damn near impossible. I'm not going to say that it's impossible, but I've seen few and far between that less experienced designers are getting jobs in this very moment in time in early 2024. That, th this might all change within the next one to two years. Nobody really understands when it'll, when it'll change, but you know the tech world is very cyclical. Right. So there are these down periods, but then when things get better, there are plenty of jobs. All right. But I think it's important for everybody right now to improve their skills with AI, with communication, with relationship building. Right. There's a ton of things that you can improve. I look at these types of periods in time, like the off season for any kind of sports league. Right. It's the off season. It's where you build and where you train so that when times are better, you're prepared. All right, so hopefully this was helpful information for you guys. 
If it was, you already know the deal. Like, comment, subscribe. And if you're somebody who wants to understand the skill sets that it takes to be a product designer in big tech, I've got my course, which you could consider taking, which is, you know, there's a link in the description box below. Or you can consider subscribing to the Design with Soul newsletter where I talk about, you know, more of my philosophies around design. But anyways, guys, peace and love going into the new year. I'll see you guys in the next video.